recently had a viewer ask me how I go about my editing, what kind of software I use, what apps, what programs, what kind of camera, how do I edit, how do I post, yada, yada, yada. And I thought today maybe I would share that with you as a bit of insight as to what it takes to produce content for this channel. I'm currently filming on my phone. I use it for everything. I had another YouTube channel, I still do, that was a how-to DIY channel, I guess is the best way to describe it. And for that process, I used a separate camera from my phone, I used a laptop computer to do all of my editing, and I used a program on there called Lightworks, which is pretty amazing. It does a lot of things. There are advantages to using a laptop and a standard camera, but for me, with this channel, and what I've learned over the last few years, I think I've gotten it down to an easy and very simple, foolproof way to produce content for YouTube that can be of great quality, but at the same time, not make me pull what's left of my hair out. So as I said, I'm currently shooting on my cell phone. It is an LG Stylo 4, which has an enlarged screen. It's got an excellent camera. It's just as good a camera as you can find in a standard handheld camera out there. Uh, maybe not the exact equivalent, but it definitely produces in 1080p or 1080i quality. So when I shoot on this phone, I use the front facing camera most of the time so that I can see myself in the frame and make sure that everything's framed up because composition is a lot of this and I'm learning as I go along on proper framing, where to set the camera, how to mix in still shots, handheld shots, tripod shots, motion shots, all of these different things. So the first thing you've got to consider is how are you going to capture all of the, the, the stuff in your vlog that you're going to post. You've got to have a decent camera. Also, as I mentioned, you have to have a bit of composition. You have to mix it up. You have to get different shots. You can't always just be having a camera set in a static location and then just make a video out of all of those. You got to mix it up. You got to have some motion. You got to have tripod. You got to have some, some locations that you're going to set it in. They're going to be fairly clever. For instance, now you're sitting on the post of my porch railing and I'll change it up now. This adds a bit of interest. Now another thing you can do to draw interest to your videos is walk and talk. A lot of vloggers do that. Kind of like I'm doing right this very second. Another thing you can try and do is to set things in front of the camera so that they can focus on what's in the foreground and not look at your stupid face. Then maybe you need some shots of you driving so that the camera's still and you're still but everything behind you is moving. That adds a whole other element. You're really letting people into your life, your personal life, your home, your car, your family, your friends, your kids. Say hey, Riley. So you really need to consider your location where you're shooting as well. If there's a lot of stuff going on in the background, a lot of background noise, a lot of wind, a lot of traffic, kind of like what's happening right now, the next thing you do after you capture all that video gold is to edit it. I do all of my editing on my phone. The editing app that I use is called KineMaster. The app itself is free. You can download it and use it for free. But if you want access to the premium content like all of the music and all the effects that you can get, you gotta pay five dollars a month for it. It does everything that I need and more. With the KineMaster app, I can not only film inside of the app, but I can also cut, add music, add text, add effects, and do anything else that I need to do to enhance the overall look of the project. In regards to editing, there's a lot to consider. You've got your music, and you've got your text, when do you put it in, when do you take it out, how loud do you make the music volume. Oh man, there's a lot. It's important to remember that you're telling a story and that story needs to have movement and it needs to travel. Also, in video, there is nothing irrelevant. Everything has been filmed for a purpose and everything has been included to justify some sort of an end and tell an important part of the story. If there's anything in the video that's not pertinent to the story, it should be edited out. That's the magic of good editing. So having a good piece of editing software or an app, while great and an awesome tool to have, is just the beginning. 
Now you're going to shoot a lot of video. Now that's taking up storage space on your phone or your camera. You may only use 10 seconds of that video, but that 10 seconds has got to be right. It's got to be cut and placed in just the proper space so that it adds to the story and enhances what the viewer's watching instead of just being arbitrary. Another thing that's important to remember is the 5, 8, 10, 12 minute video that you're watching probably took somewhere in the neighborhood of 5 to 12 hours to edit. And that's just for like a standard vlog, man. If you're getting really in depth, you could spend days editing. Of course, there are those people that just point, shoot, no editing, and post. Of course, once you get everything edited, then there is the matter of rendering the video, posting the video to YouTube, then titling the video, then typing up descriptions, then you need to add all your keywords, and once that's done, you need to make a comment and pin it to the top. Of course, you also have to consider what's your title going to be. It has to have important buzzwords, keywords, things like that. You need to optimize everything, what's called SEO, search engine optimization. You've got to go out and promote it on social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and any other you can think of. That can take hours. Now, I have to use other apps, not just an editing app. I've also got to create thumbnails. For that, I'll use Snapseed. Snapseed is great for taking photos, cropping them, editing them, enhancing them, adding effects, all of that stuff that you need to add to still photographs to create a great thumbnail to catch people's eye when they're scrolling through YouTube. Another program that I use along with that to create thumbnails is called LogoPit Plus. Now with that, I can go through and lay it out, put my icons on it, I can add in my text, my titling, I can put symbols like arrows or flashy little stuff or emojis or whatever I want to add to it. And then finally, a third app that I use, not that often, but it's a great app to have, especially for a golf log, is called Shot Tracer. Now the one I use is for Android because I've got an Android phone, but with Shot Tracer, you can literally trace your shots. The problem with that app and apps like it is that it's a whole nother wrinkle in the editing process. You have to go through each individual shot and pull out the shot from what's probably not just footage of the shot you're taking. And that's perfect. Another technique that vloggers will use often is called the voiceover. Here I've got some video that I shot in the background, I turned the sound all the way off, and now I'm recording audio through the app where I can watch the video as I speak. Now, you can use this too often and too much, and a lot of people complain about the narration and things like that. They'd rather just see live video. But I find that it's a great way to mix things up and add a whole nother element. Narration is also a great way to get a message across while important video is playing that text could distract you from. That's the right on line. The only drawback that I've found to shooting and editing completely on my phone as opposed to the camera and laptop is that I can't download music or video clips off of uh, the internet that I could put into my videos. I have to go with the music that KineMaster provides me, which is ample, but not terrific. All right, all right, all right. I've kept you long enough today with showing you some behind the scenes of how I make videos. And how I make videos is not necessarily how everybody else makes videos, but a lot of people kind of follow this, this sort of format. You've got to come up with the idea, then you've got to film all the footage, then you've got to edit it down, then you've got to process it and produce it and post it and, and, and just, it's, it's a whole thing. Anyway, you get it. So when we take all of this time to put into these videos and we really put a lot of effort and our heart and soul into these things, and then we put it out week after week, month after month to entertain you guys. We really appreciate somebody who takes the three seconds necessary to click the subscribe, click the bell notification, and give us a thumbs up. And if you share it on social media, that's extra credit, man. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.